father bring out your mind in this message and make it like a pen of a ready writer that will become like a hammer breaking to pieces the stolen heart replacing, re, re, replacing the stony heart with the heart of flesh circumcising every heart that will come across this message in jesus name i pray amen i'm speaking on dangerous people to avoid dangerous people to avoid in romans chapter 16 verse 17 romans 16 division 17 now i beseech you brethren that is to say apostle paul was addressing the people in rome that were brethren they were already born again regenerated saved renewed overhauled refurbished by the blood of the lamb having forsaken their sins and clinging unto the master through salvation and reconciliation he said i am beseeching you i'm imploring you i'm begging you i'm prostrating and teaching with fear trembling and tears brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them it will surprise you that even far back then in the days of apostle paul there were people who were trying to cause offenses divisions contrary to the doctrine that apostle paul was teaching the church of the living god by the leading of the holy spirit and the revelation god has given him in fact Peter said there were certain things that Paul received from the Lord that were very, very difficult to understand. Now, you, you, can you imagine it? As somebody is privileged to sit under a facetied, dogged man of God such as Apostle Paul and yet wanting to still cause divisions, divisions, divisions. Do you understand? divisions and offenses trying to prat prat with malicious words against a person of paul the apostle and the doctrine which the lord has used him to impact the church it says mark them what does that mean carefully note them carefully note them know where they are know who they are consider their manners and their ways of living the destruction and the damages they've made up their mind to cause he said note them asterisk them and then it says avoid them what does that mean the word avoidance there connotes don't walk with them don't move with them don't befriend them don't let them come close to you have nothing to do with them apart from greeting and even in greeting them you do that from afar don't sit down with them don't allow them buy you over don't you know learn their manners don't learn their way of living mark them avoid them otherwise they will sow tires into your life dangerous people to avoid particularly in the church in the family and in the office where you work in the yard where you live if you are not a house owner yet and the lord is going to make you a house owner very soon in the name of jesus wherever you find yourself when you notice any of the points I'll be bringing out from the womb of the Holy Spirit in this message, in anybody, no matter how popular or rich the fellow may seem, 
the Bible is giving you sufficient information concerning such an individual that the best way of treating him or her is to avoid him completely. Otherwise, it's going to make you have head on collusion with God. I want to ask you certain questions in this message because the message is all about dangerous people to avoid. Are you a child of God? I'm asking you. Do you still value the grace that saved you? Do you fear God? Are you aware that one unrectified silly mistake can spell your eternal doom? Do you want to retain your name in the book of life? Do you want the devil to brand you a no-go area to his cohorts? Do you want to reap the fruit of your labor over your children? Do you want your children to be your cover clothes? Do you want your children to love you and give you joy, rest of mind? Do you desire longevity, prosperity, security, and rest that comes solely from God? Do you hope to fulfill destiny with your mission finding expression on time? Do you want to live a life without limit? A life without problem? Do you want to live a life without bought, without comma? A life without blemish before God? I mean, a life approved of God, decorated by God, blessed by God, preserved by God, used for God, and afterward received into glory? If these questions come to you and your answers to them all is yes, then you've got to pay a keen interest to every point but the holy spirit will be pronouncing from my mouth right now i plead with you to listen to this message as many times as possible and please do pass it across to others for the benefit of their spiritual life their spiritual perfection their spiritual continuous examination the lord is coming and by the grace of god we will tidy up effectively lest he meets us unaware unprepared or better still disqualified dangerous people to avoid read it again sir romans chapter 16 Verse 17, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Avoid them. Don't debate anything with them. Don't allow them to influence you negatively. Now let's consider 12 categories of people that are highly dangerous, infectious with evil spirit that you have to avoid. One, haters of correction and rebuke. Avoid them. Two, trash talkers against God and his servants. If you look at Second Chronicles chapter 36, Second Chronicles, chapter 36 and in verse 16 the very first day i read this you know verse of the bible my heart was uh, somehow i felt the point and from there i discovered why a number of people today go through what they are going through Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 16. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets 
until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Did you hear that? Do you know there are people like that? Trash talkers. They talk trash against God and against the ministers of the gospel. My friend, you didn't call any man of God. Leave them alone. Face your own life. And if you're interested in, uh, in becoming a pastor, go and found a church. Instead of picking problems, looking for problems and looking for faults in the lives of the men of God. Who are you? How dare you? What effrontery? What is pushing you? Do you want to perish? Do you want to perish? Do you want to kill your unborn children? Do you want you to waste the life of your children? Stop talking trash against God and against the ministers of the gospel. The Bible says these people mocked the servants of God. They misused his prophets and they despised them. So much so that the anger of God rose up against them until there was no more any form of remedy for them. Don't join them. Or avoid such people, trash talkers against God and his servants, fault finders. Please avoid them. In 3 John chapter 1, there you will see a man by name Detrophes. Detrophes was such a prominent man in one of these New Testament churches that John the Apostle founded and Detrophes began to do as if he was everything in that church. He forgot that he was just an ordinary elder in the church. Where was Detrophes when John the Baptist or John the, the, the Apostle, John the Beloved, was jumping up and down behind the Lord Jesus Christ and listening to the greatest messages anybody could ever preach in his own time. The trophies were not born then. It was after the ascension and history was going to a point of culmination before John the Apostle founded the church and the trophies became an elder in that church. The Bible says in taught John, this is nine and ten john the apostle said i wrote unto the church but detrophies who loved to have the preeminence among them receiveth us not wherefore if i come i will remember his deeds which he doeth practicing against us with malicious words and not content therewith Neither that he himself received the brethren and forbidded them that would and casted them out of the church. Can you imagine that? There are people like that. They will never bring anybody to church, but they specialize in, in taking people away from the church. Your judgment is great in the sight of God. You don't bring anybody to church, but because you are naturally bad, because you, are, you have natural tendencies of influencing people in the negative way, in the way of Satan, your master, you got them influenced and you get them out of the church and thereby displacing, misplacing their souls before the Lord. You make them lose focus spiritually, the Bible says. Your judgment is great. You are fighting God. When God is out, by the time God will get up for you, everyone will cry for you. They don't bring people to church, but they can send people away from the church. They find fault. See what their pastor said. See what their pastor has done. See what his wife has said. See what his children are doing. And how about your own children? How about your own life? We are preaching the truth to you, doing our best possible to ensure you don't perish. But the best thing to do is to find fault. People are like that. In fact, many people are like that. 
To them, nobody can do it well, except they are the ones doing it. The Bible says, Detrophies was sending people away from the church. Please understand that it wasn't the founder of the church. It wasn't the pastor of the church. Just an elder in the church. And because he loves to, to gain prominence, he want people to refer to him as all in all in the church. There are people like that. If you don't give them title, like deacon, like deaconess, if you don't make them emergency evangelist and pastor, they will not allow people to rest again in the church. By the grace of God, not in the church, I pastor. If you want to go, you go, and God is going to replace you. If you are not qualified, if you do not bring fruit meant for repentance, we do not see changes in your life positively. You are not redeemed. You are not regenerated. You are still raw, and you are still carnal. You are still sensual, and you have the nature of the devil within you, and you want us to make you a pastor. No. You have to be called. You receive the call from God, and we pray to receive confirmation before it is done, lest we become partakers in your evil doing. The Bible says, avoid them, because Detrothes is a good example who was practicing with malicious words against the apostles and sending people away from the church. May that never be your portion. Don't be a fault finder. When you see fault finders around you avoid them our church is not good our church is like this there is no love in our church see those who complain that there is no love in their church they are the people causing problem in that church if there is no love in the church you start it start it yourself begin to show love to everybody you will know that there is love in your in your church just discover that you are the one who is a, is a misfit in that church you are the one you are the only one that is odd out you are the only one that is not in agreement with the structure that the holy spirit has laid down in that church number four sign seekers avoid them they will mislead you number five covetous people you remember Akan and Geazi. These people coveted what they ought not, and they perished in the process. Akan was killed by stone. Gehazi begged for himself eternal and generational leprosy. When you see covetous people around you, please avoid them. Even in the church, avoid them. Then service disturbing people, noise makers during the service, excuse givers. As the pastor is preaching, they are talking at the back. They will never listen to what the pastor is saying. And they have overstayed in the church. They have spent years in the church. And yet the devil has you know, strategically positioned them at the back seat. You will never see them sitting in the front because they know they are never coordinated spiritually. And they don't want the sp their spiritual nakedness to be, to be uncovered. They don't want it. They want to remain that they have always been discouraging new converts, new members in the church. Those who came to church and they want to be serious as they hear the word of God, they want to respond to it. But when they look at Mrs. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, Brother So-and-so, Sister So-and-so, when they look at you as being the people they met in the church, behaving the way you behave, they suddenly cool down. And remember, in this race, if you cool down, you will cool off. If you cool down, you will cool off. Service disturbing people. They will never sit there in one place. Little time, they will get up, they go out. Another time, they come back to sit down. They are always talking. They have something to, to pick inside their bag. My friend, you are not serious. Many things are undoing you. You are sick spiritually. And you are, you are, you are toiling with perdition. I tell you the truth. Avoid such people. If you sit beside them, please get up. Look for another place to sit. Don't allow them to slow you down spiritually. Ungrateful people, no matter what you do, they will never be grateful. They will never say thank you unless you keep on doing it every day, every day. Some people even want to abandon their family needs on you if you care. And should you say you are tired, they begin to talk you down. They are ready to suck you dry. They will suck the flower and cut off the root if you allow them. Service disturbing people. 
ungrateful people, ungrateful people. The ungrateful will die unfruitful. And of course, Tabiaras. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16, the Bible says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a Tabiara amongst thy people. Tabiaras, from house to house, from place to place, from shop to shop, from, you know, everywhere to another place. Tabiari, Tabiari, saying what they don't understand, explaining what they have not heard, trying to confirm what never happened. These are Tabiaras. The Bible says, avoid such people like plague. Yes, then sadist. There are people like that. They are sadist. They are never, never happy. You cannot see them smiling. While others are smiling, they are busy frowning. While others are singing, they are busy complaining. These are the people you must run away from. I feel like reading it to you. If you are a sadist, you come to the service, others are laughing, you will not laugh. Rise up, you sit down. Let us pray, you are talking. Let us pray, you are ransacking your bag. What's missing inside that bag? Do you want to bring out prayer points from that bag? No, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Look at Deuteronomy 28, verses 47 and 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 47 and 48. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Don't be a sadist. Don't be a sadist. Brighten up. Reflect on what God has done for you and give him thanks in return. The more you thank God, the more he will bless you and the happier you become. And then another point, tribalistic people. There are people like that. They come to church and they become tribalistic. If it is not an Igbo that is leading, they will not cooperate. If it is not a Yoruba man that is leading, they will not cooperate. That should not be. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the issue of tribalism became so big and tough in the midst of the people of God in that church. And Paul the Apostle had to address it. He said, brethren, I cannot uh, speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto Cana. Because a few of you were saying I'm of Paul. Others are saying I'm of Apollos. He said, neither I or Apollos are anything, but Christ is the message. Christ is the center stage. Christ did not die for a, a sectional tribe he died for all and sundry let's come to serve him that way tribalism will disrupt the structure of the church would destroy the unity of the church if a church you know is occupied with you know with tribalism or tribalistic people the pastor of that church will never rest the pastor of that church will know no peace and the growth of that church will remain at limbo we need to understand that. Don't be tribalistic when you see people in the church trying to form clique. Avoid them. These are the contaminants. These are the you know legions of demons that the devil have sent to destroy that church. Don't be a party to them. Murmurers, complainers, and grumblers. In Numbers 14, point six hundred million people sat down in front of their tents in the wilderness. And they began to cry. And they were more money against God, more money against Moses. That was the day God made up his mind. None of them will get to the land of promise. They will die in the wilderness. My friend, you murmur too much. Ah, I thought that the pastor's message would be just for about 15 minutes. With the kind of life you are living, how may 15 minutes message help you? You were brukui. Eh? You think that that 15-minute message can help you? It can help you. 
you are deep in deception you are deep in lying in lying you are deep in hypocrisy you are deep in darkness it takes two hours message at a go to brush you up to clean you up don't you know you are spiritually dirty can't you smell the odor offensive odor you are emitting well i wouldn't blame you deaf people blind people leprous people and those who are spiritually backward wouldn't see rightly anyway please don't be a murmurer if you murmur as a child of god you will attract the judgment of god immediately when you see people murmuring complaining and grumbling around you avoid them as a child of god avoid them avoid them and those who are never serious with their spiritual life avoid them avoid them the bible says in jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20 said the harvest is past the summer is ended say yet we are not saved ikori koja agbaola pelu gbogbo bo se penso si to ba kan na no mo sori o mo nto nse ojo ti eleya e ma yole gbogbo aye ni o ba oke igba soke asele o ni lo enu e awa kan ninu igbagbo wa wa rin arin dano gba ofo ojo keji oja the bible says in second timothy chapter 3 verse 7 ever lenny and yet they will never come to the knowledge of truth ibi opo to nso si laye baje to ninu emi ibi opo to nso si lo sori buruku to nu emi ko dagba ko pa ko ye aye ri igbe aye gbagbo na niyan anu re se mi o ti mo lala to nlu wa saka baka 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 ba leyin igba soke Oh, si ni lu awon oluso ago tabi ti wa mo mo complain ni sin ko mo sa wa wi o ti poju are wa su fopa won fopa won fopa won an ba fopa won to se pada rorun wo seyin o better kan fun ni wa su shekene 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 ko ti gba be lorun apadi ewo loyan no mejeji i've given the word of the lord unto you avoid this people for you to get the proper understanding of what i've just given you please take the pain to read second timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5 and second john chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 god bless you as you be amen